This is College Hockey Southwest Weekly, your source for college hockey in the desert southwest, part of the Ice Time Hockey SW.com family. Welcome in, hockey fans in the desert southwest. It's another edition, another episode of College Hockey Southwest Weekly. As you can see the smiling face next to me, it's Paul Hornstein on Long Island, Scott Strandy here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Paul and I have had a couple of two weeks that have been kind of crazy, right? We, uh, yeah, it's been fun, though. We met in California to see the, uh, the Harvard ASU series in Irvine, California. Mm-hmm. You went back to New York. I stayed here yeah. for a minute. Then I went to Vegas and saw a little college hockey in Vegas. Then I raced back here last week to see Saturday and Sunday action against Michigan Tech. Bottom line of it is, Paul, we have a... Uh, a team that's 11, 8, and 3, if I'm not mistaken, in our Arizona uh, State Sun Devils. Well, we can look just to double check. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that's the uh, Michigan Tech record on that side. Uh, yes, 11, 8, and 3. Okay, so I know what you're going to say when I say the magic number. You're going to say it's 1. I understand. We've gone through this a thousand times. I looked at the number. Really? I don't remember. Since July, I looked at the numbers and I said, based on what I see, and this is my opinion, folks, so don't shoot the messenger. It's just my opinion. Um, What I see from the schedule this year was I felt the Sun Devils, in order to guarantee a spot in the national tournament again, would need 24 wins. I'm not saying that they're if they don't get 24, they're not getting in. I'm saying that if you get 24, I don't think they keep you out. So. That means there's 14 games left, and they're going to need 13 wins to equal 24. Um, that's called running the table. That is not going to be easy. Okay, so here's even if the, you even if you look on paper, and yeah, here's that is news. not going to be easy. Here's the good news: the last five weeks have probably been, and Coach Power said that today when uh, he had a brief media session, that uh, they might have played the toughest five weeks in a row of any college hockey team with the teams that they played. And he thought they could have done better, but he was not totally upset with the way that they played through that. Now, here's a caveat on that, Paul. There were some games, as we've talked about, from opening night on that they should have won and could have won and didn't win. Right. Now is there a little chance for redemption? Because if you look on paper, and I realize that there's a lot of parity in college hockey, but if you look on paper, they are going to be favorites in every single series except their trip to Clarkson in a couple of weeks and right. their uh, trip to Wisconsin. They might still be a favorite there, but what we don't know with Wisconsin is we don't know what team that's going to be. Are you know, they the going to be playing is, for the prob- something prob- or are is, they going to not be? Well, first of all, they may or may not be, but in all honesty – in 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 the season so far, the early part of the season, uh, granted it was a small part because they had that two game series at Minnesota State. They've been Jekyll and Hyde too. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm not even talking about weekend to weekend. Sometimes it's period to period. Right. So while yes, on paper they should be favored to take two games against Brown in in Alaska Fairbanks or whichever Alaska it is. I can't keep track. Um, uh, Anchorage. Be Anchorage, Anchorage. Okay. Yeah, Anchorage. Um, they will be favored to beat RIT, but, you know, that's, uh, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, Holy Cross and Bentley, they should beat two when they come back to the East Coast after this weekend. So that's what ten of the fourteen games that are left. Yes. Okay. They should. And that, be that leaves you two in Clarkson. Two and Clarkson. That you two in Wisconsin. And, so so here's the deal. And Wisconsin is as Jekyll and Hyde as anybody. Exactly. But so, here's the deal. Let's let's say they do get those ten. If you add okay. ten to the eleven they already have, that's twenty one. All right. And let's All stop right. there. Let's stop there. Okay. Before you okay. go any further. Okay. Um, does 21 get them in? No, not okay. this year. But you know what? You know what 21 does, though? 
it verifies last season. Sure does. Sure. Okay. Um, getting into the tournament two years in a row uh, in season three and season four of the program would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. It would be awesome. But let's not lose sight of the big picture as long as we're having this discussion. 220 win seasons in a row as a third and fourth year full D1 program. Okay. With the schedule that they've played. And let's, yeah. and let's and let's and let's let's be honest here. Um, the schedules that they've played last year and this year is part of why they got into the NCAA tournament last year. It's Correct. part of why they're still, you know, if the season ended today, uh, I believe there's 16 in the pairwise right now. Correct. Yeah, that, correct. That's fringe. That's bubble time. Yeah. Okay. Theoretically, it's it's just outside the bubble, but. It's bubble time, okay? Yep. Um, so you're talking about a team that in four years has made an NCAA tournament and is fighting for one of the last spots in an NCAA tournament, okay? And you can't guarantee, especially as an independent, to your recruits that you can be in the tournament every year, Okay. What you can do is say, listen, in four years now, we've had two 20-win seasons. Don't you want to win? Okay. Do you want yeah. to be the guy that takes helps us take the next step from being a consistent winner to a championship contender? Okay. Winning is important. Yeah, no Whether, doubt it. Okay. And, so, and so 10 wins gets you to 21. Okay. Whether it gets you into tournament or not. You followed up with 21 season now with a second 21 season. And that shows some consistency and it shows a building program. Absolutely. And I think uh, here's what I'll say to that. And I agree 100% with you is that the, the thing with it is, is that the, um, the team right now knows they're better than they are. They're frustrated like everybody is that they didn't beat Mercyhurst opening night. They're frustrated that they let Denver get away with a tie, you know, even though there was other variables. They're frustrated that they they only got a a tie and a loss with Harvard. They're they're frustrated over this last weekend, to be honest with you. They thought they could win both of those games against Tech. So so here's what they're trying to do, and and this is where I think it's going to be beneficial for this year and next. They realize they have 14, and you'll hear this with Phil Bunces, our uh, Pitchfork profile, when I asked him. They realize that they've got 14 games left to 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 get this together. And by get it together, right. I mean close out, finish games. Right. They're there. Every single game, they're right. there. Right. There's, there's only one game that they've been really blown out, and that was that 8-4 game, which was just an anomaly. But... Every team they've played, they've been in a position to win that game, and have they've either come out with a tie or a loss. Have so, to learn how to win. Exactly. That was my point. This is their chance to learn how to win. And you know how you do it? You do, go out to you go out to Brown, and you do what you're supposed to do. You take right. care of a team that's a lesser team than you, and even though you're on the road, and you just go inflict yourself, and you gain some confidence. Right. Then you come back, and you do the same to RIT. Then right. you go out to Clark. Brown is in the 50s in the pairwise, and that ain't 56, good. 56, I think. 56, uh, it's 55 I think. 55 after tonight, I believe. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It is 55. I, I apologize. I apologize for that. I'm no, looking. I said 56. You said okay, 56. I thought, did I? All right. Well, whatever. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Uh, and RIT is 36. So, I mean, those are games that you need to win. Um, it's, as a, but you here's, look at, okay, here's my ahead. point. If you win those two games, those two weekends, you sweep them, then right. you maybe have some confidence, and maybe you've gotten over that hump now of how to win close games, and maybe, maybe you get one. Uh, I think sweeping at Clarkson is going to be next to impossible. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I, but I think if you could get one in Clarkson after two back-to-back sweep weekends, I think you'd be pretty happy when they came back with oh. winning five out of six. Listen, if you take five out of these next six games, that's – that's that's as good as you can expect. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, Clark. You know, that's 
that's, and, that's uh, anything more than that is, I mean, five out of six might not be realistic, but mostly because <laughs> you're playing Clarkson on the road. But we know that's a good team. Uh, and you, we know that playing in that building is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and we're obviously getting ahead of ourselves. But um, uh, the goal here in these next six games should be to take five out of six. Put yourselves in a position to not have to sweat out everybody else's conference tournament. Yep, exactly. So I, what, I, what I'm getting at, my whole point of this is, and you already touched on it, the fact that they're chasing another 21-win season um, back-to-back. But And I'm starting to feel like Groundhog Day because it's in a little bit different, but it feels like that last weekend in Wisconsin is going to be like that last weekend in Minnesota. And then we're going to find out if they have learned anything because I know there were a bunch of variables that didn't go their way in the trip to Minnesota, but it's not going to be any easier playing Wisconsin that last weekend in Wisconsin, no. especially if you've got something on the line. And if you remember correctly, that was Minnesota series last year. I went there because I thought they had something on the line. I really thought that if they didn't get at least one win there, that they might not get in. As we know, they still did get in and they fared you know, fairly well for a team that waited five weeks to play their opponent or four weeks, whatever it was. So anyway, I, on the optimistic side, I like their chances coming off of this. I hope they learn because Coach was not happy. As you probably saw in the post game last Friday night, he said it's a win and we'll take it. But we got to learn how to close games out. Saturday, they didn't close out a game again, yeah. and it bit them. It bit them for a loss. So I think they're coming together now as a, as a team that realizes that they have to play a full 60. That's been said a thousand times. And they have to finish at the end. I mean, the last three minutes are as important as the first three. And you can't slow down if you're up two to one or whatever. No, you can't. You can't. So anyway, just... so that's that's uh, basically the whole nutshell on that. Let's quickly, before we jump into uh, our Pitchfork profile today, and again, we won't have Coach Powers. We didn't have him last week, won't have him this week. We have a little sound bite from him, but I'm just going to put that out on our social media Okay. Um, we're not even going to insert it in here because it wasn't a one-on-one. It wasn't a true powers play. So we'll just put that out. If people want to listen to that, then go to our Facebook page uh, today or tomorrow and uh, and pick that up. Okay. So as we uh, recap a little bit, a Harvard series, uh, a loss and a tie. And the, right. tie, the tie coach has said he, he was very happy with the way they got the tie. They came back. Well, listen, you were down complete. three goals. You were, yeah, I mean <laughs> – you know, you were down four to one or yeah. three to one, and you came back and tied it in the third period, um, and took it overtime and lot and played the overtime, so you got the tie, right? You didn't right. lose it in the overtime, right? Um, you know, just I'm I'm sure that the coach is 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 frustrated with the inconsistency on the ice, as 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 everybody else is. Um, if he's not. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, but no, I, I, that's fairly uh, visible. I think sure Paul. That, that he's frustrated. Um, we, I, yeah, I, I, I look that, back I, to the one thing he told you, remember he said, uh, yeah, I'm frustrated with the power play, but we got to remember these are kids. He yeah. told you that. Yeah. So, uh, I think, I think uh, he, he struggles yeah. a little bit on that. Now they struggled that in California on that. And by the way, two nights, uh, two great crowds in that building. It was Fantastic. awesome. awesome. I, I think it was a win-win for everybody. And I say Southern California, Harvard, and Arizona State. I think everybody got a win out of that. Yeah. Um, and once again, thank you to the uh, Ducks for uh, putting on a good show. Um, and they, taking care of us. <laughs> yeah, take care of everybody. Um but I think the the issues with the power play started rearing their ugly heads, its ugly head again. Um, the couple of weeks before those two games, it looked like they were close to figuring it out. It looked like they were close. And then all of a sudden, here we are again. Uh, those two games against Harvard, not a lot of success on the power play. Um, you know, they... they, 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 they 
you know, they, you know, I don't know if they, they probably weren't really in a position to win the, the first game in, in Irvine. They had opportunities to win the, the second game that ended up in the 4-4 tie. Uh, they, they came on like a house of fire, especially in the third period. And had some opportunities in overtime, just couldn't cash in. Uh, and then uh, on to Michigan Tech where... And before you start Michigan Tech, let me throw this out there and then you can give your analysis on it. Everybody in the world anticipated a big physical rough after the Yeah, I... <laughs> and I know you didn't, and I know I didn't really either because we both discussed it and we said that neither team could afford to have any shenanigans because they both needed wins. And guess what? They split. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I, I expected, um, honestly, they, they stayed away from the shenanigans for the most part. But I kind of also thought both teams would try to be more physical and maybe but that fear of, of not being able to afford to go down a man and, and taking those extra penalties kept them from uh, things from getting a little bit heated for the most part. I mean, they had a couple of moments yeah. where, where things got a little silly, uh, for lack of a better term. But um, I, I, I think that fear of losing right. kind of kept things under control a little bit. So... You know, and 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 I and I thought you saw some Jekyll and Hydeness from both teams over the weekend. Uh, ASU came out, played really, really well uh, in those first two periods on Saturday night, um, and I, I thought maybe we were going to have a chance for a, a rocking chair game where we wouldn't have to sweat out what happened at the end. Um, and Michigan Tech, two of their goals came on scrambles where ASU couldn't mm -hmm. clear the puck. So it's mm -hmm. not like in that game on Saturday night that, you know, ASU got beat to pucks or ASU, or ASU made mis mistakes in a, in, a, in a technical sense or Michigan Tech just made a great play. Uh, two of their three goals came literally on scrambles where the puck was sitting there and nobody could get a hold of it, and eventually Michigan Tech did. So, uh, you know, Michigan Tech made it 3-2 to two on one of those scrambles. Then they, ASU got the goal right back from Philip Bunces uh, to make it 4-2. to two. And then Michigan Tech, uh, you know, it took a while for them to get some sustained pressure. Um, but, you know, ASU kind of regained their composure a little bit. But then another scramble makes it four to three with about five minutes to go. And now you're starting to sweat. Yep. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you three takeaways for, for me. And then you, you give me your thoughts on the three takeaways. But I thought that the second line now of uh, Lemieux and Morocco and Bunces has just been phenomenal. Two weekends in a row. I thought they've been all over the ice and just, raising havoc i mean that's a, that's the second line now technically right uh number two is he oh, worked and coach powers i'm talking about worked demetrius kumanzis back in a little bit of time with the first line he was the extra forward right and and they worked him in on on the weekend a little bit of time with the uh the first line again to give him some confidence building and i thought for the most part he pretty much held his own if you could hear anything, like I was sitting right above, obviously, in my press box seat, but there were several times when the coaches were yelling, Como! Como! So there were times when they wanted to take him off the ice when they thought he'd been out there a little too long or whatever. Um, but I thought Demetrius was playing much better. And I think the other thing is, I think they realized after this five-week stretch that it's hard to sweep. And it's hard to win NCAA hockey games. Yeah. So I think they're um, they're now come to that point where, you know, coach said it Friday night that we got to play a complete game. We got to play a full 60. And you can't be content with winning Friday because it does you no good to win Friday and lose Saturday. Right. Well, you gotta, right now, you got to start winning Friday and Saturday, or in this case, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday. You know, they don't have a choice. 
Um, I would agree with you on the last point. Um, I that you know it's it's hard to sweep uh, when you are not those top teams like Minnesota State, like North Dakota, um, usually Denver or Duluth. But um, what about Cornell? <laughs> Cornell, you know, hey, you know, but you get the point. Um, yeah. I thought um, the second line. And I hate using those numbers. I really do. Um, I wish they'd bring back names like the French Connection or the <laughs> or or. Well, we can you know, do that. We can start giving them names. Let's, let's let's find something because on any given night, who's to say the quote unquote first line is the first line? And right, you know, I I much in college hockey, especially in college hockey. You know, um, you know, uh, but. Um, um, I thought they played a little. The, the line you're talking about played uh, much better on Saturday than they did on Sunday. I think Sunday they took a little bit of a step back. No particular reason. Uh, the whole team took a step back on on, on Sunday. So it's not like uh, they did. They took the step back and nobody else did. Um, you know, that's kind of why they struggled and eventually got beat on Sunday. Uh, as for uh, Demetrius Kumansis. I thought he played very well on Saturday. I, I thought he he got more ice time uh, as a quote unquote extra skater uh, than I than I kind of expected him to get, and he was all over the ice. I, I thought yeah, he played could... very well on Saturday. I, I I really did. I thought he played. I th- I thought the message got through, and he played well on Saturday. Uh, as far as Sunday is concerned, I think so much of that game on Sunday was spent special teams oh. that they could get him on oh. the ice as much as they probably wanted to. I agree. So, uh, you know, that was a problem there. Um, you know, and uh, okay, you know, so that's, here's, that's a, the, here's the good on, news part of things. Okay, um, we found out today that uh, <laughs> the, the miracle man. <laughs> I'm calling him uh, Dominic Garcia. I, I've never seen anything suffer an injury like that and recover as quickly as he has. I've watched him go from using full crutches one week to one crutch to today he was pretty much walking on it with a crutch in his hand but was not really using it. And Coach said he's hoping to get him back for RIT, which I think would be just a nothing short of a miracle. Well, listen. Uh, I need all hands on deck if they're going to try to make a run at this. Um, you know, they can use the extra penalty killer. Uh, oh, can they ever? You know, um, especially if you're, if, if you're going to have games like you played on Sunday. Um, and by the way, on Sunday, you know, one of Michigan Tech's goals was in another scramble. It's not like they had clean looks. Yeah, exactly. You and know, Coach touched on that again today, too. That he didn't think they were playing real poorly defensively. They just had little lapses like that where he said there's a scramble, somebody gets a loose puck, and bingo, it's a you know, but every goal counts, right? Every goal counts. You you gotta figure out a way to get that puck out of the front of the net. You've got to figure out a way to get that puck out of the zone. And just about every time this year when ASU doesn't clear the puck out of the zone, it ends up in the back of the it net. It ends up in the back of the net, and you just <laughs> you you've gotta figure it out. Uh, the other thing you've got to figure out is you've got to figure out this power play. Yeah. You have got to figure you out. Gotta this. Now, I know, now I know they got one on Sunday, but what does that make them? Like three for the last 35 or four for the last 35? You've got to figure something out. And maybe it's as simple as, 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 as getting Demetrius Kumansis back on the power play. Maybe it's as simple as taking your number one D pair and putting your second unit forwards just to mix that up a little bit. Saw that happen for a while. And give it a little bit of a different look. Uh, well, some of that is timing, but I'm talking yeah. about on a regular basis. You yeah, know, right. if, the, if the, the, the Sanchez Walker and uh, Sandu line is just out there, you know, and all of a sudden they're getting a power play, you know, you're not going to keep them out there to have them have a three minute yeah. shift. So, yep. but what I'm saying is if you're in a situation where you can call your shots in terms of your five guys out on the ice, 
I don't know, maybe put uh, started off with Walker, Sanchez, and Sandu, and maybe put Judson and Semic out as the D pair, or have uh, Pashnuk and Maniscalco be the D pair to start, and have uh, Lemieux, uh, Morocco, and and Niram Bunces as you, you know your your starting forward line. I don't know what the answer is. I just know that you've got nothing to lose by mixing it up a little bit, or figure out a different combination of forwards to put out there. Um, you know, when you're four for thirty or four for thirty-five, it's not like the numbers can get worse. Yeah, right. Um, and if you're gonna start- and if you're gonna make this run. You're going to make this run because you guys have, because the power play started to click. Well, let me tell you that, as you know, I had a chance to watch uh, Ohio State and Cornell. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, us, uh, isn't that V yeah. Ohio State? Because they get cranky yeah. if you leave out the V. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, okay. I didn't call them Ohio, though. I just called them That's Ohio true. State. That's right. It's Ohio State. Yeah. I know, so, I know. And they, they, they beat ASU in the wrestling match last night. I was not happy, but. <laughs> but anyway, I I had a chance to watch Cornell, which I was wondering if they were for real. They hadn't played a lot of games yet, and they were number two in the country, and I wanted to see for myself. And I took video of two of their power plays. They didn't get many power play chances because once the Ohio State found out it was good to stay uh, out of the uh, box, they, did. It was, they, uh, they realized that it was going to be a goal, but if you want, that might have been, and I have the videos to prove it, that might have been the best power play I've seen in college hockey ever. And I'm talking about, I saw Jonathan Taves, Ryan Duncan, TJ Oshie. I saw those guys. But I have never seen anything like the display from at least the top. They ran a top umbrella, and they went bing, 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 three times across. And by the time they got it back and went, Here's where the difference is. They did not miss a pass, no. those three rotations. So it went from the, the wing guy to the guy on top to the other wing, back to the guy on top to the wing, to the guy on top to the other wing. And by the time they finished that third sequence of passing, they had the, the box so confused at where the puck was that they left the guy wide open twice to finish it off easy power play goals. So I think what it's going to come down to more than just the combination of players is I think they just have to bear down and make better, crisper passes. If you, it, I compared it, that was, that was Friday night. I compared it Saturday night to both ASU and Michigan Tech, and their power play passing, both teams, was considerably slower and less crisp than what I saw from Cornell. That's just my eyes. And, and there, I'm, Cornell, listen, there's something to it. You, you know, you're the part of the key to a power play is being quick and decisive. You, yep. You're trying to get the other team out of position even yep. more than they are being down a man. And part of that is being, you know, moving the puck quickly and having those passes be tape to tape. Okay. Let's take a quick break. Let's bring in our uh, pitchfork profile. Phillips Bunces, the Latvian, my favorite unmarried Latvian. Yeah, he called you out on that. Good for you, Philip. Good for you, my man. Good for you. <laughs> so so we uh, we got that clearly straightened out. I like Phil. He's a great kid and, and a great a great interview. So let's jump in with Phil Bunces. We'll come back, and Paul and I will wrap things up on this edition of College Hockey Southwest Weekly. We'll be right back, folks. Hey, Michael here from M-Drive. My dad, a world-class scientist, actually made M-Drive for himself to stay active and continue enjoying life. And yes, M-Drive supports healthy testosterone, but it's so much more. M-Drive is the everyday supplement to fuel your drive with more energy and more strength. Listen, we'd love for you to try M-Drive too. Visit mdriveformen.com and we'll give you 20% off your first purchase. Just type in the code DRIVE at checkout. We find your prime with M-Drive. Welcome in, hockey fans from the Desert Southwest. It's another Pitchfork Profile. I got the big Latvian with me. This is my favorite unmarried Latvian. No. 
second. <laughs> you probably talked to Vito before this, huh? And no, 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 no. Phil on fire is here. Phil Buntis, welcome in. Welcome. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this season. What's going right for you this season? Because you guys have been all over the ice your line. Now you're up to the second line and and making life tough on opponents. Um, I would say. Just playing simple, you know? Yeah. Trying to execute the game plan as much as we can. And like me, like right now it's me, Lemmy, and PJ. At least like, yeah. Um, and I think we just keep it simple, you know? We try to overwhelm him. Like PJ is a really quick guy. Like right. he buzzes around like all over them. Lemmy can make plays, you know? So they slow the game down a little bit. And then I'm trying to find the middle ground and, you know, play center with them. So it's been good. It's been a strange season for you guys, for the fact that you started early and you to get a trip to China in, won a tournament there, mm -hmm. then you come back and you got to go through a regular training camp, and then there's some breaks that happened early in the year. Now you're in the middle of 13 weeks in a row. How does your body feel right now? Uh, it adds up a little bit, but um, I wouldn't say that we're fatigued or anything, you know, because like Leanne puts in a great work with us in the gym, and um, it is weird scheduling, like you need to get used to it, because we had a couple weekends off earlier right. this year in a row, and then now it's like that long stretch, like you said. But I think it's fine, it's just, you know, those Saturday, Sunday games are a little weird. It's a quick turnaround, but it's the same for the other teams, right? So, you gotta make most of them, and now next week school hits in, like, we're gonna play Friday, Saturdays again, so it'll be good, we will good. Okay, so we looked down 14 games left this year. Last year you were a tournament team. I think we all know what you have to do to get to the back of the tournament this year, but What's it like in the locker room? What's the mental attitude right now? Because you guys have had some games that you've lost that have been games that you thought you should have won. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're dialed in, you know, like yeah. we believe in our group, like we know that and we know how good we can be, you know, so we just got to focus, like same mentality as last year, honestly, you know, just right. focus one week at a time, one game at a time, you know, like whatever it is, Tuesday, so we think about Saturday game, you know. That's it, nothing after that. Just focus on that weekend, get it done, and then move on, and move on, and so on. Okay, so when we look at the difference between last year and this year, probably the most obvious one is last year, you were able to sneak up on some teams that didn't think you were as good as you were. Mm. This year, they know you're good, right? And I think you get everybody the best shot. Like, Tech gave you everything they had. Right. Is that different? Can you feel that on the ice? Uh, maybe a little bit. I mean, with Mitch Tech, like, there's kind of, not a rivalry, but you know, like yeah. last year, we had some good games in a row with them, so. That was a good battle for sure because we want to win and you know right. both ways like it was tough but i think yes like teams definitely respect us more and like they want us they're more determined to be us you know to know right. yourself like because they know we're good like we've been good you know so it is a little tougher like we have to learn maybe like sometimes to how to take a charge and manage the games better because we can be you know play as like the better team sort of like yeah the, we're like number one team in the game you know not just like an underdog chasing something so uh, we could, yeah, just got to manage the games better and it'll be good. Let's talk a little bit about your style. You like to, uh, to play the body, but you like to move the puck and you like to score. Um, how does that mix work for you personally? Um, I mean, I try to play the puck a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I have those hands, so. uh, I don't know, like, I, I try to play a 200 game, you know, like, right. D-zone, like, I take pride in it, like, I know this weekend we gave up one, I think, on Sunday at the end, but like, I take pride in that and then, you know, just work. Basically, I go to the net on both ends, you know? Right. So that's where, that's where, that's where I get paid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of getting paid, tell me about this summer. You had uh, Vito get, get married over in, in Latvia and, and, and then you guys come back. Are things different now for, uh, for the Latvians here at ASU? Yeah, you know, like I'm his son now. Like, those are my new parents. <laughs> no, it's good. Like uh, it was an amazing wedding. Uh, right. Max Valley was there too. So right. there was three of us. Um, it was a great time. Like it was an unbelievable. And you know, to see my roommate and one of my best friends being you know married and living happily with his wife now for a little bit. Like it was it was great. It was a great time. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we're looking at another East Coast trip for you. You're off to uh, to play Brown this weekend. Mm -hmm. When you look at parity in college hockey. It, it's pretty much everybody can beat everybody on any given night, right? I mean, you can't take any nights off. Right, yeah, every team's good, like, that's, I mean, everyone knows that, you know? Yeah. It always shows them, like, any stats you look at, or I don't know, you know? But just the fact that some team is slower or higher doesn't mean anything, you know? That's why I don't know, like, 
honestly, I don't know where we at. I don't know where Brown is. Like, I know it's going to be a tough game because, like, again, we're going around with, like, dogs yeah. in Vega and they want to beat us, you know? Um, I don't know if we have played them before or not. I don't know that, yeah. But, yeah, like, I'm sure they're going to, you know, come out hard. So, it's like any good, any game. So, it's going to be a good reason for sure. Tell me a little bit about the travel part of this season. You know, I mentioned China, you know, Alaska. You've been, you've been all over the place. Mm -hmm. But what's it like? Because you have to come from Latvia when you come over here and you go back home. Um, is the travel something that's been tough this year or has it been okay? No, it's the same, I would say. Yeah. Like, we're used to, like, I mean, we just, like, we play in Europe, but like, <laughs> like, everyone's done the travel for you know a couple of years now, so like we're used to that. You know, I'm take care of our bodies, and and sometimes being on the road is good. You know, you get away from school a little bit, you get to be with your guys on the road, spend some more time with each other. Like it's good. Let's wrap it up by just that. You you spent this whole holiday season playing hockey games, meaningful yeah. hockey games, yeah. but you got a chance to go to California, get a little sun, do some yeah. different things like that. How was that bonding experience for you guys? Do you feel like you came closer together as a team? Yeah, definitely. That was a good trip. Like, it was amazing how big of a crowd there was. So, like in Anaheim, and, oh, Irvine. Yeah. Irvine, yeah. Irvine. Irvine. Like the crowd was crazy. Like it was electric. Like the yeah. fans that we had, that Harvard had, it was amazing. Like I loved it. And definitely as a group too. Like you know, just being out there in the West and like kind of playing over the holidays, like spending time with each other. Like it was great. All right, by my count, you've got 14 games to go. We've got to get as many of those as we can to get you back into tournaments. So good luck this weekend. Good luck the rest of the mm -hmm. way. And thanks for spending some time with me. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, folks, you had a chance to listen to the, uh, the Latvian, Phil Bunces, who I think has been having a fantastic year. I wanted to have him on because I wanted to talk specifically about what's making him tick right now. And, and he said some interesting things. Paul, I know you had a chance to listen to a little bit. Your thoughts on Phil Bunces and in, in our seven, eight-minute conversation? Well, listen, I, I think they realize that it's now or never. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, they know that the up and downness is is maddening to everybody, including themselves. But now you need to come out and you need to say. All right, we're done here, and we need to we 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 need to start stepping up our game because we haven't been doing it. And it's he like said it's now or never. If you don't start winning now, uh, you're 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 not going to even get to twenty, let alone the tournament. So, um, he like said we have they have two games this weekend against Brown. Brown right now in the pairwise is as we said in the mid fifties. Um, Losing one of these games, even though it's on the road, will kill you. Yep. And you got no margin for error. Certainly not against this team. You might have some margin for error if you sweep Clarkson. I not sweep Clarkson. Get a split against Clarkson. Can we that get a might... sweep against Clarkson? Can we just no. take that right now? No. Can, and we, move on? can we worry about that? <laughs> I, that was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> I meant to say split. Uh, oh. Um. Oh, listen, if they can get a sweep at Clarkson, then we're, we're, we're having a different discussion. Uh, but right. let's 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 not get too crazy. Let's worry about Brown first uh, because you have to stay in the position you're in. And it's said it's 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 now or never. And that's really what it comes down to. And, well, you know, well, here's, the, here's what I'll ask perfect. you, because I know you look at the pairwise like I do. Um Last year, there was volatility, and people moved up and down, moved up and down. And we thought at some point towards the end of the year that if ASU maybe had won both games and swept at Minnesota, that they could have possibly been a two-seed in the tournament. Um, that was something that was a possibility. Yeah, I guess. But, I don't remember, but, right but now, okay. But right now, if you look at the, at the pairwise, and I had this conversation with a couple other media people today. Um, when you look You're at the in. pairwise right now, you're not yeah, in. No, a, you're not in. But do you see those 16 teams, the top 16 right now, and I'll include ASU, those top 16, do you see any of those teams that you can say probably are going to fail of getting in the tournament? Because I don't. I think 17 to 60, I, I don't see any 17 to 60s getting ahead of the, the top 16. So, I, I mean, even if ASU were to run the table, and I don't know how far they could go. 
because look at look at what you got. Listen, you got North Dakota, it listen, Cornell, it doesn't, it doesn't Minnesota matter. State, Scott, Denver. But it doesn't matter. Get in. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is that that it's going to be hard to, like we were just talking about, you're on the bubble at 16. On the bubble. Right. So you really. No, you're out at 13. You're out at 16. You need to get to 13. You need to get to 12 or 13 to give yourself Mm -hmm. some room. You are out at 16. Let's let's not forget that the Atlantic hockey champion is probably not going to be ahead of you in the top 16. They automatically get a bid. So that means you have to be if everything else fell exactly perfectly, you need to be at 15 where Michigan Tech is right now. So. 16 is out. But, but what I'm saying is when you look at, at the top four, all four of them are in, right? Yeah, though, Which that's... means North Dakota's in. That's an NCHC. Yeah, they're uh, not. And Cornell's in. Right. We know that for sure. And we know that Minnesota State WCHA is in. And we know that Denver more than likely is in. Uh, Denver, to me, looks like the only one of those teams that may have a kink in their armor. So. Well, Providence is all right now. Good. Lowell's 11. Um, Michigan State's actually 16. Notre Dame is at 14. Uh, Clarkson is at 13. So there's not a lot of spread. Uh, what else do we got here? Boston College is going to be in. Duluth, right now they're at 10. I can't see them falling lower than that, but who knows? I didn't expect them to be at 10. Uh, Denver is still at four. So if you're ASU, you want Denver to continue to win. Uh, Michigan Tech is at 15. So maybe there's a tie for 15. So does that make ASU 17 theoretically or technically? Theoretically. I don't know. Um, so, you know, there, there is there is room for movement. There's just not a lot. Yeah, that's there's my point. There's just not a lot. Um, that's my point. So you're going to need to get one of those games against Clarkson. Even Wisconsin's in the lower half of that bracket. They're in the mid-30s. So, you know, ASU might be favored in a couple in those games. Who knows? Yeah, I know. Uh, but Michigan State is 60. It, it is, there's a lot of room for movement. It's just not a lot of spaces available. Right. Um, the, the likelihood is... Uh, you know, playing around with it, ASU might be able to get up, might be able to get back up to 13. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sitting here looking at it. I know there are people that do that. I'm sure there are people that have done it 100 times in the last 24 hours. But Well, what you're going to need is people to beat up people. You know, I mean, NC, NCHC is going to have to beat each other up. Yeah, um, but right now, who's a, a, who, it's ASU, and it's, it's Denver, and it's Duluth. And North Dakota. Well... Darren, I'm not even, they're not, ASU's not no. coming anywhere near, so, but Denver, no, no. No, you need but Denver mean, to keep winning because they're at four, and Duluth is at ten, so that's where maybe, maybe, that, but it's unrealistic to think ASU can even get to ten at this point. Right. You, the, the, the idea is like last year, be 12 or be 13. That's yep. your best shot at this point. So. Yep. All right, I can't uh, I can't say it any better than that. We know what what it is. I'm I'm on the fall uh, bandwagon right now with one, with just this one at a time right now. I have no choice, and uh, and we'll see where we end up. But the good news is this gauntlet that I said for a while, this five week stretch is over. This weekend also ends a Saturday Sunday, which again nobody wants to say Saturday Sunday is a bad deal. I get it. It's every team, both teams got to play at the same time. Everything's, but don't try to tell me that that's normal because if it was normal, you would just play every, you know, weekend like that. You're going to come back and Phil Bunce has said it best today. He said he's looking forward to getting done with this weekend and coming back because then there's going to be some normality. School's going to start again. You're going to play Friday, Saturday. It's going to be your norm, right? So you ask what happens on Sunday or what happens on the second game. And I understand this, so don't send your emails and start screaming at send me about anyway. it. Send them anyway. Because I get it. Both teams have to do it. Send them but anyway. Some t- but sometimes some teams are better at it than others. Okay. 
All right. All right. Well, hold on a second. Folks? Hold on. Well, well, yes, well, just, to, well, just to let people know, because we scream about this almost every week. Okay. Uh, the big giant sports company has got the streaming this weekend with the little math symbol next to the name there on is? on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And it's not it's not a multiplication sign. It's not a division sign either. Okay. All right. Uh, and on Sunday's game, not only is it streamed by them, uh, it's also on their the the uh, northeast. It's not. We really know it's not northeast, but it's the same initials <laughs> for that regional sports network. So you get two different ways to watch the game on 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 Sunday. So hopefully um, one of them will work for you. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but listen, I, you know, it, you've got most of the two games on 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 this weekend. Only missed the first couple of minutes, but after that, it was smooth sailing. I'll take that. No disrespect, Josh. I know we talked about this in Anaheim, but good job this weekend for you guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just wanted to let people know because they're going to ask us uh, how we can watch. I would get asked every week how to watch the games. So do I. Um, so your buddies up there. Uh, I'm going to tell them to Scott go to Stel. RTO Sullivan's. Yeah, there you go. They, you can guarantee those games will be running clean and green this weekend. So, uh, you know, head up there and Ooh. have yourself a beverage. Maybe a I just snack. heard. May, did I just hear? A clean and green <laughs> come out of Paul. Did you make a guarantee? No. Who are you, Joe Namath? No, you guarantee no. this? <laughs> I said you should be clean and green. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, what are you doing somebody, using CB somebody, radio talk? That's what I <laughs> Somebody replay that and just make sure there was a yeah, should maybe in there. A, yeah, maybe I don't remember what I said. It was 30 <laughs> seconds ago. So. <laughs> anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in again. Our sponsors, our great sponsors at Behind the Mask, at OxyPow, at our friends at M Drive. And by the way, folks, if you have not seen the What Drives You, the first one of 2020, get there. Uh, a great interview I did with uh, with Connor Hetzel of UNLV, who's uh, not only a fantastic hockey player and a great human being, but also taking up the guitar and singing and and Man, oh man, the kid's got it all. Did you it show was him such how to a do fun it? time. It was such a no, no. Believe me, I don't even go anywhere voice? near that. I don't yeah. go anywhere near that, Paul. <laughs> but I sure did love talking to him about it. So get there and see what drives you every Tuesday, starting uh, this past Tuesday. So today, you can see it uh, every Tuesday as we tape this. It'll be out tomorrow. But um, the uh, every Tuesday, what drives you? Sponsored by M Drive. So thanks again to M Drive for jumping in on that. I hear rumors and rumblings that College Bar is coming back. If you've been on Twitter, you see them. So hopefully our guys at College Bar will be back. So we got a spot to hang out. Uh, we're working with RTO Sullivan's. We really want to bring them on board. I also want to thank our friends in Vegas at uh, Jesse Ray's Barbecue. Oh goodness gracious! I'm going back up again on Thursday for ACHA hockey, and I cannot. You're wait just going to get up there for the Jesse barbecue. Ray's. Stop the crap. <laughs> Uh, so, Jesse Rays, we got to get you on board. We're looking forward to bringing Roger Klein and, of course, uh, Mexican Moonshine, which now is going to have a new name and a new branding, and we're happy to bring them on board coming up here. Uh, of course, the Ice Den, Scottsdale and Chandler will be up at Scottsdale tomorrow for the uh, the Hockey Talk with uh, Andrew Bell and myself. And we'll um, also look over to our friends at Oceanside. Use Great Studio 3 today. I also want to throw it out. Paul, I got you on this one. I said, we're on TikTok now. I don't have any idea what that is. <laughs> I don't have the slightest idea what that is. Well, hey, I you hit me I over the head with it, and I still wouldn't know what you're talking about. I didn't know about it until just recently, and I heard about it, and I looked at it, and I thought, this is cool, because here's what it is. It's a social media platform right. that gives you 15 seconds of video. So you, it just, you hit the button, you get 15 seconds, it shuts off. So you, if you want to do something quick, like today I took a, our very first video at Ice Time SW at TikTok, uh, TikTok.com slash Ice Time SW. Um, 
I took a little video of the practice ring going on. And for right. 15 seconds, it's kind of cool because you see some stuff go by. And, you know, you can do something quick. And that's a 15-second video. And then, boom, it's gone. You know? And it, so, I mean, people can get a chance to see 15-second blurbs. You don't really have to say a lot. You don't even say anything at all. You don't have time just... to say anything in 15 seconds. <laughs> So anyway, folks, we're on TikTok, Ice Time SW, TikTok.com slash Ice Time SW is the way you get there. Um, follow us, like us, let us know what you think of the videos. We'll be doing all kinds of stuff because it's very easy and very easy to get out to you so we could throw it out real quickly. Um, it, it's fun for me because stuff that I see at games like little warm-up tendencies or watching guys flip the puck or do their little warm-up routine. Johnny Walker yeah. is really good at doing that. So you could do that on TikTok, right? Just 10 seconds, okay. and you don't have to edit it. Don't do anything. Just press the button, let it go, and okay. stop it. Listen, I'm anyway, we're on to TikTok. Out how to edit reel-to-reel tape, so what do I know? <laughs> All right. I also want to thank our friends at OxyFile for always being there for us. Fantastic Fridays. Start up this Friday. Um, we got a couple of big ACHA series coming up that I want to mention real quickly before we go. We've got Minot State traveling to UNLV for a Thursday night game. Minot State will then play Friday night against Grand Canyon. And then on Saturday, Grand Canyon and UNLV will play. UNLV, last I saw, was number 23 in the ACHA rankings. They need a serious run to get into uh, the ACHA national tournament. They got to drop down somewhere around 18. So they got a lot of winning to do uh, in a short period of time. So, unless you got anything else, Paul. No, we're good. We're Relive good the Miracle 2020.com and we're good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Get to Relive the Miracle 2020.com. Uh, there you go. You like that? You like how I snuck that in there on you? I, I love it. And I, I told you to go look at the webpage again. Uh, I really like the before and afters you've seen of these guys. Yeah. So you kind of get a feel, and then you get our our little uh, conversations we have on the podcast. So you yep. kind of get to know these guys a little bit, especially for the millennials that only saw them no on idea. a movie. Yes. You know, it's a chance to see what these guys look like. Neil Broughton and his cowboy hat. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, All right, folks. That's it for another show, another College Hockey Southwest Weekly. Stay tuned for Paul and I next week as we'll be recapping the Brown series and talking about R.I.P. coming to Oceanside Ice Arena. See you next week. Have a good night.